to everyone tuning in, thank you very much. And to everyone in the United States, happy Memorial Day. I hope that your weekend was awesome. Now the stock market will open on Tuesday and we already know over the weekend that the debt ceiling is what we well it has been agreed all right so both parties have reached an agreement it will go for vote on wednesday if i'm correct and if all goes well we're done with the debt ceiling drama and we can move on to the markets and then later on the fed which hopefully if it does just a you know even a slight pause would be a temporary you know a slight pause would add to a great summer in my opinion for a mini bull run it's something that I've been talking about actually from for the past. But what is going on? The debt ceiling is this actually good? And where will the markets go for how long? And the reaction and all that stuff. Also, what one billionaire said in a recent interview. We'll look at all that in this video. So the first thing you see here it says debt ceiling deal unlikely to spark major relief rally. Investment chief says on CNBC. Uh, look. It might not be the ultimate rally because we still have the Fed decision coming up in June for the whether they'll have another Fed rate hike or not. And this investment chief is sort of right and sort of wrong. The debt ceiling deal that was reached and will go to be voted on is not a solution to the debt for the United States. It's not a solution. It's actually just a temporary patch until 2025 just to get so they don't have it in their way for the 2024 elections. That's it. It's uh, you know, it has a suspension in 2025. Basically back in in 2025 we'll be back again in this whole drama about what's going on the 34 trillion dollars that right now, right now the United States owes and by then there'll be even more and higher and so on and the whole drama will continue again and the markets will be uh, rattled and so on so we're gonna have in my opinion a temporary small relief a small um, call it a bull run which I think in my opinion is obviously more than welcome and one to take advantage of and dump positions that you wouldn't want to hold for the long term anyways now, when we talk about debt, we have to understand that the whole world is in debt, but some countries more than others. Did you know that Japan is actually number one, the worst, when it comes to debt to GDP ratio? That's it. I mean, I, not a lot of people would have thought about this, but Japan is the worst globally. Then comes Venezuela, number two, Greece, and so on. So where does the United States come in? The United States is number 11, guys. It's, it's getting really close to being in the top 10 worst nations when it comes to debt to GDP ratio, right? So it's number 11 right now. And here you see the top 10. I, you know, a lot of people, like I said, would have been shocked to know that Japan is number one, Venezuela number two, which Venezuela has, you know, the economy is in a complete disaster. Greece is number three. Over a decade ago, Greece almost you know, failed and went bankrupt and who knows what else would have happened 10 years later. The Greek economy today is doing actually very well. And had you invested in pretty much most of the Greek stocks for the past 12 months or more, you would have been up over 40% minimum. The stock market in Greece is just doing awesome. Of course, doesn't mean much, but you know, like I said, but it also goes to show you that when things get out of hand with the debt and countries are ready to go bankrupt, it can take more than a decade for them to finally start to get back on their feet and the markets and so on so imagine if the united states ever had a serious problem a lost decade the charlie munger said we'll see so the united states number 11 ranked but things were way tougher warren buffett's right hand man has a blunt message for those worried about hardship so you know things were tougher but you know, it's not so dramatic as may, may, many in you know analysts make it out to be on TV and or on YouTube videos. It really isn't. All you have to do really is to start loving and following and studying Warren Buffett, his whole career. Warren Buffett has been through the worst, and he's been through worse situations than what we're at right now. He even has said it, and so did Charlie Munger. And Warren Buffett is one person who really adjusts because he doesn't go by so much by the market conditions, but more of 
can I find a great business? Because a great business can be found and does exist in all market conditions. Occidental Petroleum was the latest, and I think that Occidental Petroleum by third quarter, fourth quarter, and going into 2024 is going to be stunning. The Dow Jones Industrial Average since 1983, this is the max chart, and this should also give us a lot of hope. And like I said, I'm not since 1983, but if you were to take and make a chart, get a chart, uh, I should have I should have gotten uh, the chart of the you know the U.S. markets in, in general from the 60s, let's say, it would be pretty much this, the max chart, right? The U.S. has been through a lot. The economy of the U.S. has been through a lot, a lot, a lot of crazy, crazy, wild things. But at the end of the day, the U.S. market, the U.S. economy, the United States of America, through the years always prevails always does better and warren buffett said that if you believe in america and you should you'll be fine spy is one of his favorite uh, also guys you know this you need to look at this image and study it very well the more you study and understand this image the better of a trader you will be right this is very, <laughs> I like this. Strangers on the internet, stock tips, me. This is pretty cool. In fact, a formula, if you want, if you're new to investing, you just started, you know, uh, getting into trading and you happen to run to my video, here's my formula to success. And it's not even a joke, it's actually serious. Read the Intelligent Investor Book, study, follow Warren Buffett, everything Warren Buffett has done in his lifetime. And then look at that image, like I said, and that's going to equal success. Now, going to this billionaire, Jim Rogers, he says that he's bracing for the worst bear market of his life, de-dollarization and higher interest rates. Now, as far as the de-dollarization, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it right. Um, I do have an opinion on that, and I'll express that in a little bit. So he says we're going to go through the worst bear market we have ever seen in history. In fact, the worst he's ever seen in his life. In a recent interview, he said seven things. Seven things. We'll look at all seven. The first one, he said the next bear market will be the worst in my lifetime. Well, you know, um, yes, you have. Some, you, you know, you can. You have been through a lot. The guy's old. Uh, he has been through a lot. Uh, now, you know, I don't know how much longer he can go <laughs> to see anything worse, but we'll see. Because he says of the debt has gone up by such staggering amounts in the past 14 years. You know, if you look at the U.S. economy as a stock or as a business, then yeah, you would be worried, right? Because if you were to look at a stock and I told you, hey, look at stock A. I think that stock A is awesome. And you look at it and it has, let's say, I'm just making up numbers now. 10 million dollars in revenue the past year and the, the total liabilities were 5 billion well obviously you would right away tell me hey this is crazy you're crazy i'm not buying that and you'd be right so you know with the u.s uh debt being over 34.8 trillion dollars that's pretty scary at the same time that also shows that how strong the u.s economy is to be able to handle this but let's not also forget something the u.s economy is actually stronger than it's ever been it's it's extremely strong the u.s has now companies worth more than nations around the world and in fact more companies now than it ever had before they're worth more than nations companies in the u.s private american companies in the u.s that have more cash on the side than nations around the world right so there's a lot of money out there but you know then comes the politicians who managed to screw it up many times so we should always be concerned he says about washington they don't have a clue what they're doing and they've proven that day in and day out you know I, I, I can i disagree with this no i can't disagree with this all right politicians in washington really are screwing things up and it's not just the current administration but pretty much every administration because the debt is just getting larger 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 and recently the u.s if you look at the u.s you know there's a lot of issues that are, need to be addressed and they're not being addressed uh, on a wide scale cities uh, pretty much you know going decaying or degrading uh, and a lot of things and I think that these are things that can be overcome and they can easily but in order to overcome them we should um, in my opinion uh, avoid wars right so wars are things that set nations back number three you should be extremely worried if you're not you don't know what's going on many countries are starting to look for alternatives to the u.s dollar partly because of its horrendous debt problem 
I'm looking every day, he says, because I know that something bad is going to happen in the currency markets in the next two to three years. He said, this is scary. That's pretty close. Now, as far as the U.S. dollar and countries looking away from the U.S. dollar because it's of its horrendous debt, that is, a, yes, that's one reason why a nation would look to try to get itself off the U.S. dollar as a dominant currency, right? You know, because the world's currency reserve, the dominant currency reserve right now is the U.S. dollar. But it's not only the horrendous debt problem. I think, in my opinion, a more major problem is the fact that in the past decade minimum, the U.S. has been using the U.S. dollar as a, you know, form of weaponization, let's say you know, sanctions, and sometimes rightfully so, and sometimes debatably not rightfully so, we'll see. Uh, History always proves uh, at the end of the day who's right and wrong. But, you know, when a nation feels threatened because of the U.S. dollar, they're more inclined to say, you know what, I'm going to have to look at a different way of doing my transactions and as far as the currency reserve and so on and that's not good you don't want to lose that you lose that the economy of the u.s is going to get screwed so we have to make sure to uh you know the politicians need to make sure to not screw this up this is a very important stuff all right number four interest rates are going to go higher worldwide i don't know how high they have to go to kill inflation this time around The world has never seen the debt and the spending and the money printing like in the past few years. So something is going to have to be very, very uh, ruinous to solve the problem this time. I don't don't agree with this because you can't apply that for every nation, right? Um, Sure, you have Turkey, let's say, which, which has a really high inflation rate. Venezuela, which is like, I don't even know what, it's it's horrible. Uh, Where else? Uh, um, And some other countries in Africa and so on. But the U.S. inflation rate is is high, I get it, for the likes of what the Fed wants. The Fed wants 2% and the inflation is still way higher. But it is going down right the year right now with what the fed is doing they're able to you know reduce the you know to bring the inflation down they're bringing it down each each month every six months every you know the inflation is getting uh noticeably uh uh, lower so uh it depends this is you know this is nation by nation and uh and the interest rates um going higher will be again nation by nation and how the inflation goes and the policies and whatever else might come up that affects it so we'll see how this goes it's not really a one formula universal thing there'll be trouble in all the markets he says prosperity markets stock markets bond markets currency markets everything you have to learn about cash or selling short in order to survive what's coming and, you know this this is a this paints a picture of uh, the absolute end to the world and in a universal instant way uh, but like I said if the US manages to bring their inflation rate down to two percent and I think the Fed will end up doing that um, and if we can avoid recession if we can avoid it at the same time then this is not gonna happen at least not on the wide scale like it's uh, the, that uh, Mr. Rogers uh, says. So I don't think the world, he says, is going to convert to Bitcoin. It will be computer money, but it will be the government computer money. True, true. 100% I agree with that. Come on. The whole nonsense that Bitcoin is going to be the global currency and all that stuff. Um, you know, it was a good story and people bought into it and crypto went up and so on. But at the end of the day, if anyone still believes that, I don't know. I don't know. Guys, seriously, no. Uh, you know, a lot of nations have a lot of reasons not to accept Bitcoin, right? As a, as their uh, um, uh, as the as a as a currency. So it's not going to happen, guys. Uh, it's it will be government money. It will be government digital money. All right. So I agree with that. Number seven, the best place to be when you have inflation is real assets, and real assets are commodities. True. True. And in my opinion, one of the best assets when you have inflation, and this is just my opinion, is crude oil. Crude oil. Oil is, uh, I still believe in a recovery in the oil prices. And I feel that by the end of this year and going into 2024, oil will be a really good investment. Uh, and obviously for those who got in earlier. And uh, so that's one commodity I'm very bullish on. 
Are you looking for a Discord platform that offers a first-class trading community? That's what you can expect when you join Bull Market Watch. Trading can be challenging for some people, but we're here to simplify the process for you. We have a very powerful track record. Our Discord deals with day trades, swing trades, and long-term trades. Hundreds of traders operate through our Discord where we come up with stocks to trade for profits on the NASDAQ and in YSE. With a low monthly subscription of $9.90, you will have full access to our Discord where you can interact with other traders and get all the latest news when it comes to trading as well. It's a community that is extremely supportive of one another and always willing to help each other out. Become a member of Bull Market Watch today and be on your way to a better financial situation. I'll end the video with this image again. Thank you very much for watching this video. If it was helpful to you guys, share the video on your social media networks. It really does help me. Hit the like button and join my Discord to help and support this channel. The link will be in the comment section below. I wish you all the best and take care.